We negate, resolve, torture is a just means of, of preventing terrorism. Before starting, we'd like to observe just as defined by the Merriam-Webster Dictionary as acting in conformity with what is morally good. Uh, in order for Pro to win, we have to prove that torture is justified according to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary. They need to show, for the Pro to win, a satisfactory reason or excuse for something to be done. This means that the round should be evaluated via a cost-benefit analysis. Do the alleged benefits of torture outweigh its clear harms? Judge, we are here today to argue that they do not. Contention one, torture violates... Torture violates human rights and it justifies our opponent's actions. Judge, torture is a clear-cut example of a violation of human rights. By subjecting people to cruel and inhumane practices, this violates various international statutes, such as the UN Declaration of the Human Rights and Convention Against Torture, as well as the Geneva Conventions. Food and Rhea, the Boston Globe, wrote in 2009 um, of an example of form of torture practiced in the United States. Quote, what does waterboarding feel like? The following is a transcript of the 1947 court proceedings in the trial of World War II Japanese war criminal Chinatsuku Yuki accused of the torture of Philippine civilians. He was, to, I, he was told by Yuki to take off my clothes, lay on a bench. Yuki tied my hands and feet and neck with my face upward. Then with water from the, from the faucet, they poured on me until I became unconscious. I could not and lost, con, uncon, lost consciousness. I found my consciousness come, came back again and found Yuki sitting on my stomach. And then I vomited the water from my stomach. How many, how many times did this happen? Around four or five times. Judge, by taking part in terrorism, we become as bad as our enemies. They do, that do the same thing. By losing the moral high ground, we justify the acts of torture that terrorists do on our own soldiers. This is inherently unjust. Human Rights Watch Executive Director Ken Roth stated in 2003, if you start opening the door, making little exceptions here and there, uh, you basically send the signal that ends justify the means. And that's exactly what Osama bin Laden thinks. He has some vision of a just society. Uh, his ends justify the means of attacking the World Trade Center. If we're going to violate an equally basic prohibition on torture, we are reaffirming the false logic of terrorism, unquote. By subjugating our enemies to cruel and unusual punishment, the United States is undermining its own democratic values, the same values that it is trying so hard to promote overseas. In, in doing so, the U.S. is losing its legitimacy in the international sphere and thus its ability to promote its interests abroad. Contention two, torture often leads to false information and wastes limited resources. When prisoners are subjected to torture, they are liable to say anything to escape the pain. This false information leads our government to act upon or misdirect our resources and compromise our national security. As the largest example of this is the Iraq War, according to Andrea Parso in 2011, senior counterterrorism official in the Human Rights Watch, quote, national security is diminished by the false leads torture can produce. When Ibn Sheikh al Libi was tortured, he claimed a link to, the Iraq, to Iraq and weapons of mass destruction that then Secretary of State of Secretary of State Colin Powell to used to justify the U.S. invasion of Iraq in 2003. As we now know, this information was utterly false, unquote. Another example is given by Peter Finn and Joey Wark in 2009 from the Washington Post, quote, CIA officials subjected captive Abu Zabaydah to waterboarding and were convinced that they had details of the methods to, uh, of operations yet to be unleashed and the methods to succeed in breaking him. And his stories, CIA officers around the world sent CIA officers around the world chasing leads, though not a single plot was foiled as a result of Abu Zabaydah's confession, according to former government officials, unquote. They go on to say that, quote, when we spent millions of dollars chasing false alarms, one former intelligence of official said, unquote, the, imp the impact of the evidence shows that there's countless resources and lives are wasted on the dead ends from information that is gained under torture, which has even been used to escalate into pointless war, while real terrorists are still on the loose. Tension three, our, our acts of torture is used as a tool to recruit new terrorists. Terrorists utilize the images and videos of torture in order to inspire others to join their forces. They use it in order to justify their cause. By showing potential recruits the extreme abuses that other terrorists are subjected to, Andrew Parso clarified that many officials reported to the foreign fighters joined the war in Iraq following the release of the Abu Ghraib abuse photos. Um, Brian Jenkins, also from the RAND Corporation, elaborates that the inhuman treatment of subjects promotes their recruitment efforts. And for these reasons, I urge a con ballot. Ready? Alan Dershowitz defines torture as anything ranging from unmitigated cruelty as a prelude to death to the most non-lethal and even non-physical mind games that police play with suspects. Just as defined as based on or behaving according to what is morally right and fair. I contend that torture is morally permissible in the act of preventing terrorism because it is the obligation of a state to mitigate potential suffering upon its citizens. This obligation is derived from the social contract of which the state is binded to protect and serve the welfare of its citizens. Michael Walter furthers, quote, when our deepest values are eradicated 
directly at risk, the constraints lose their grip and a certain kind of utilitarianism reimposes itself. I call this the utilitarianism of extremity, and I set it against the rights to normality. No government can put the life of the community without and of all its members at risk so long as there are actions available to it, even immoral ones, that would avoid or reduce the risk." End quote. Therefore, I contend that terrorism has the potential to threaten the welfare of society and cause mass suffering, so we must adopt policies to try and avoid such atrocities. Observation one, the pro does not have to show whether or not torture is effective because we ought to exercise every option in the effort to stop terrorism. Even if torture is ineffective, because the state must try and stop these atrocities, it is morally permissible for them to torture in order to protect its, con uh, its constituents. Observation two, in order for you to vote con, they must prove why psychological torture is not morally permissible as well since the term torture encapsulates psychological action as well. Contention one, states have the right to self-defense. When the potential danger of a bomb going off or a terrorist attack taking place is evident, states should not be forced to sit back and hand over the reins of their welfare to the terrorists. The states themselves should govern their destiny, which means that they should have the right to defend themselves from potential harm. In a hypothetical situation where a bomb is about to go off in five hours and a suspected terrorist is caught, the state has every right to try and produce information that can defuse the bomb. By not using Using every avenue of recourse, the state violates the social contract because they allow harm on its constituents that could have been otherwise avoided if torture had been used. Contention two: Terrorists are not entitled to, are not entitled to legal protections from the Geneva Conventions. The Geneva Conventions outlawed all forms of torture and made it an international norm. However, I contend that terrorists do not apply in this case because they do not obey the international law, alienating themselves from the international community. Charles Crothammer explains: "Quote, <clears throat> he's entitled to no protections whatsoever." People seem to think that the post-war Geneva Conventions were written only to protect the detainees. In fact, their deeper purpose was to deter the abuse of civilians by promising combatants who treated non-combatants well that they themselves would be treated according to a code of dignity if captured, and crucially, that they would be denied the protections of that code if they broke the laws of war and abused civilians themselves. Breaking the laws of war and abusing civilians are what terrorists do for a living, so therefore, they're entitled to nothing. But contention three. Torture has worked in the past. The New York Times uh, reported on the interrogations of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed and Abu Zab Zabadiah at Guantanamo Bay. The, the paper uh, reported that by 2006, whether it was a result of a fear of waterboarding or trust building or the demoralizing ethics, ethics, uh, effects of isolation, Mohammed and some other prisoners had become quite compliant, advising their captors on their fellow extre extremist goals, ideology, and tradecraft. Moreover, it is empirically verified that many potential terrorist atrocities have been deterred or prevented via Via torture. Intelligence Squared quotes, in 1994, a 19-year-old Israeli Corporal Nakshon Waxman was kidnapped by Palestinian terrorists. The Israelis captured the driver of the car used in the kidnapping and tortured him in order to find where Waxman was being held. The driver talked. His information was accurate. In 1995, the police in the Philippines tortured Abdul Hakim Murad after finding a bomb-making factory in his apartment in Manila. Eventually, he confessed secrets of a terror plot to blow up 11 airliners, crash another into the headquarters of the sea. CIA and to assassinate the Pope. Thus, because I show that ter ter uh, torture is empirically proven to prevent terrorism, you ought to vote a pro. Thank you. Okay. Are you going to time? Uh, Three minutes? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, can I get the first question? Sure. All right. So, you talked about how. Um, you don't have to prove that torture is effective because as long as we're doing something about terrorists, uh, it's my a good thing. Not, my argument's not about doing something. The Walzer evidence states that all the, the state must do everything possible to try to avoid. Right, but if, if the things that they're doing don't actually work, isn't that kind of a relevant fact? That's exactly where contention three comes in. I show you that. It all right, works. But, but you said earlier on that it didn't really matter whether or not it was effective as long as we're doing something. Well, effective and working, because something could be ineffective, but it could still work, right? Uh, I mean, it, there's a lower possibility that it works. However, since it does well, work, well, we're, we're, at, we're, we're talking about whether or not. I, I meant whether or not it works. So it, it, is, it is relevant whether yeah, or not. It, it does work. All right. So if we were to show you that in the majority of cases torture actually does not work and is counterproductive, I preempt that argument. I preempt that. We win this round if we. Absolutely not, because the government, regardless of whether or not something is effective, they still have to exhaust all avenues of recourse before they 
put the but, white flag. But up. shouldn't can they be? Should, wait, can I can I just finish this? Sure. So you're saying that even if something is ineffective, the government should be engaging in it? Sure, if that's the last option available. Can I ask another? So it, no, but if it's not the last option available, okay. and torture so actually does not so work. So your contention too, right? You say that if, if, if they if, testify to false information, once we once we get information from these terrorists, doesn't the CIA try to verify it somehow? Well, as we saw in this, uh, you know, they, they weren't able to verify. A lot of times, they have the only thing they have but to go on is. But there are times where we can verify. But in the majority it, right? of the cases, or in a lot of these cases, it's not verifiable. Okay, so what percent of cases is it not verifiable? Well, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, I'll get that for you later. But it doesn't really matter the percentage of cases if you know we're going to war based on false information. That's Absolutely, we should absolutely stop. So you're standing people. up here saying that you don't have evidence of these of the cases that were. It's not what I said. Bio. So can you tell me what percent of cases, which we cannot? I mean, we we don't have the percentage when it comes to torture. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, Your third um, can I can I go back to you? You kind of ignored my question when we were talking about sure. effectiveness. Sure. Uh, you you said that that the state should go for uh, go to like any lengths to stop terrorism, which I agree with. But to the extent where if we could show that ter that torture doesn't really work all the time. Or, or it doesn't work to, to the majority of time, wouldn't we then win this round because the state shouldn't be going after something, wasting resources on practices that don't actually work? Okay, so in the case that a thousand civilians are going to die, we should resort to Right, but if, if, if right. That, that, that same testimony is then allows us, it makes us go to war for false reasons. Which Your argument about I have to prove why it's effective is not true because the government has the obligation to its citizens, which means that they have to do whatever it is possible. The government has, has the obligation to use effective means? Why? You would have to give a counterinterpretation if that is true. Why do we have to use effective means? Um, I thought that was self-evident. Okay, can we talk about, okay. okay. All right, we'll run prep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can, you, can you guys sign this? Yeah. Thank you. So today I'll be going down my opponent's case and basically negating their points. So let's start off with their framework. They basically talked about how an obligation is to protect the social, um, they have, the government has an obligation to protect people. We agree with that. They talked about their first observation was torture doesn't need to be effective. That's inherently false. The only just, the only way a government can act justly is to use the most effective means because if they're using a means that isn't effective, they're wasting resources on means that would be effective and save more lives. So. At the point where torture only saves five people and regular interrogation saves ten, you should be using regular interrogation because that's more effective and it saves more lives and that's the moral high ground. And that's what we're claiming. That's what our first contention talks about. Um, his second observation is um, you don't need to be morally um, – you need to use every avenue of um, – you need to use every avenue of options in order to prevent the deaths and terrorism of a society. But this is also false. You need to use all the morally correct, um, you need to use all the morally acceptable pathways. I mean, if we follow this rule, we could basically kill like every old person for their organs and give it to the young people. Is that morally right? No. But it's the most effective means of solving problems like organ donation. All the people with failing organs is gone. But it's not right. That's not just. They talk about in their first, they talk about in their first contention that um, utilitarianism versus normality, any action to um, reduce threats, I just uh, talked about that. The ends don't justify the means. When you're looking at this, um, when you're looking at this case, you need to evaluate not just the ends we achieve, the lives saved, you need to look at what means we're using. Now, in their second contention, they talked about how the terrorists are not entitled to Geneva Conventions. They gave up these rights because they break the laws, but this is inherently false. They are, they're also um, protected by other docu documents such as the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the United, United Nations uh, Convention Against Torture. And you also need to look at this in the perspective of the terrorists. They believe they're doing what is just. Um, if we follow this guideline, we're basically saying that American soldiers should also be allowed to be tortured because the terrorists in there, the terrorists in other countries see them. Um, see our soldiers as terrorists. Our opponents see our soldiers as destroying their livelihood. They view them the same way we view terrorists, and they would be justified in their actions. And that's inherently unjust. 
Their third contention talks about how torture has worked. They talked about um, by 2006, Muhammad and Abu Zayed gave up a large amount of information. I have a response to that. Um, according to um, according to the RAND organization and an FBI agent from April 27th in the Telegraph, the information they got from Abu Zayed actually came from regular interrogation. When they were trying to um, put him through torture, he wouldn't give up any information. The, when they got the information that led to all these terrorist plots, that was from regular interrogation. Um, they also talked about how they saved a child from a car, and they talked about a s third plot about um, the, this case in Manila. These are isolated events. We talked about an entire war that was started off of false information to justify. Our points outweigh them at this point. Um, they also talked about um, they also talked about the ticking time bomb scenario. I'm sorry, I skipped over this. It was in the second contention. The reason you shouldn't look to this um, this kind of scenario is because it's never actually occurred in real life. Um, according to John Moore from the Time Magazine in June 2011, the ticking time bomb is a false scenario. Any terrorist group capable of carrying off a sophisticated attack knows enough to compare compartmentalize the attack. The operatives are only told what they need to know. There would never be enough time to actually like prevent this, time, um, this attack from happening by physically coercing them. Because they're looking outside the because our opponents are looking outside the norms of reality, because they're willing to use immoral um, actions and the means and the ends are not justified because we've talked about in our own case how it leads to more deaths because more terrorists are brought about, more terrorism is brought about and how um, excuse me and how, how more terrorism is brought about and how terrorists use this to justify their actions. We can see in the resolution that um, the resolution has been negated because torture is no longer a just means of preventing terrorism because it's not the most effective means and it's, um, it's not moral in methods or um, ends. Thank you. Uh, just give me a second, sorry. Okay, everyone ready? Yeah. All right, awesome. I'm gonna go uh, down their case, and if there's time, down mine. All right. Okay, so at the top of my opponent's case, he's talking about um, various aspects of, uh, in order for the pro to win, they're going to look at a cost-benefit analysis. So I'll get to that later in my rebuttal. But moving on to their first contention. Their first contention is talking about the violation of human rights. And uh, they bring up the fact that the ends justify the means. But now, throughout Crossfire and throughout uh, the last rebuttal that my opponent had, they're talking about how it has to be effective. Now, um, I'll once again argue about that later. But if they're talking about something that's effective, it, uh, that means they're basing it off of a consequentialist standpoint as well. If you're looking at effective you're basically looking at the ends. So if they're saying that the ends don't justify the means and they're talking about effectiveness in general, you're going to look towards the means and basically our framework in general on that point. Now, um, they bring up this uh, Osama bin Laden quote. Now, um, it, one of the ways we found Osama bin Laden was because we were able to torture one of the couriers, and we got a name out of that. Yes, it was only one part that allowed us to find Osama bin Laden, but it still played a role. This shows you that torture, uh, it should be just as effective as nuclear weapons. We're not going to use it all the time. It's just there as a threat. Now, um, uh, sorry, I'm skipping around, but I'm going to go into their attack on our third contention. The fact that uh, the RAND FBI regular interrogation happened. Now at the latter of our third contention, we're talking about the fact that the fear of waterboarding and the fear of this torture is exactly what led to the information. Furthermore, the Philippines example is a perfect example of a ticking time bomb. Because we show you in that example, and my opponents just claimed in the last rebuttal that's not possible, that we can actually find and deter this from happening. When in the Philippines example that we gave you at and the third contention clearly shows you that it is effective and that we have done it before. Now, moving on to their second contention. Their second contention is claiming that we have limited resources and that uh, torture was an invasion of, uh, in Iraq. Now, that's all they talk about, that the war started from this torture piece of evidence. First of all, that's inherently incorrect. It's a fallacy. It's a, it's a flaw in their argument because there's no reason why a country, even if they're claiming this, would go to war just based on one person's information from one fact. One, we were attacked on 9-11. Two, we had various sources of intel that said that, yes, they had uh, WMDs, which means that we didn't go on just from this one piece of information. We went on uh, analysis from our experts and multiple various other uh, pieces of information. So the fact that they're claiming that one big war started up because of torture is incorrect, and you can't even look at this as a piece of evidence. Now, um, on to their third contention. They're talking about it's tools to recruit, and, we, and uh, even in their rebuttal, they're talking about the fact that... Um, if we're treating uh, t 
terrorists with torture, obviously they're going to be able to recruit more. Now, they recruit more for various reasons, and it's not just because we're able to torture them. The recruitment process in general should be regard, uh, disregarded only because when we go into other countries, we're still getting help from these nations, these citizens, people who want a brighter future. Now, they're talking about the moralities and all, and all these aspects. So, one year, uh, once they didn't, first of all, they didn't touch my, sec uh, my second observation, which states that in order for the con to win, they have to prove psychological torture is not moral. Now, psychological torture, once again, worked in the Philippines example. So that's going to be one of the reasons why you're voting pro in the first place. Now to continue down, once again, because and as uh, David Cole defines uh, terrorists as um, profession by definition an unlawful combat uh, combatant, he lives outside the laws of war because he does not wear a uniform. Meaning all these Geneva Convention examples, all of this... Um, examples of human rights declaration can be dropped on my opponent's case. Now, um, once again, I, we were, we're already showing you on the affirmative that it has been effective, and that it's not like we're using it all the time. Torture is one used as an intimidation factor, just like nuclear weapons are. Mutually assured destruction almost, but in this case, at least we get information. And our second point is, uh, even though my opponents claim that uh, they're not really searched into, they're searched into before we carry something out. Even if we have a raid and that one instance we're wasting resources, if we don't use torture, what else will happen? What information aren't we gaining? Especially in these ticking time bomb scenarios that I've given you. So if you look at this as a big umbrella, um, we're showing you the morals aspect of this and the factual is on the affirmative side, meaning I see nothing but an affirmative ballot. Thank you. You have a first question? Okay. Um, you talk about how um, you, the government needs to satisfy every possible means, right? Well, you already conceded no, um, that. I didn't ask the question. No, I didn't. Oh, oh, first off, okay. Um, okay. And the question is, if the government has a more effective means of uh, gaining information, shouldn't they use that before they get onto the torture? Well, that's exactly right. You're not, you're not telling me at all in that statement why we shouldn't use torture. You're just saying we should use other things before torture. No, but we should use other things than torture because they're more Okay, effective. so we can use torture. No. You just said we can I use said, other things than torture. No, because they're more effective. We shouldn't use it. That's why. Because so you, there are other more effective options. Okay, but you, at that point, aren't you like your partner? Your partner stated, mm -hmm. and uh, your yes. partner stated that you, uh, you agree that we should use any extent to defend the country. Correct. That's morally correct. That's morally correct. Yes. Okay, so you're telling me that uh, I gave you an example. Okay, of is a war is a, the, is a war at all morally correct? Um, depends on the cause of the war. If we're stopping the Nazis, that's morally correct, obviously. But we're still taking lives, right? We're stop. Yeah. Okay, so for stopping terrorism, oh, isn't the same logic? No, not that? at all. Because why? Because when you're actually when you're um, when you're torturing someone, the new factor that comes in is the is the infliction of pain because you're intentionally just hurting this person. Okay, yeah, but once again, what yeah. about the psychological torture that we also apply? Why is that so important in your case? Why is it why why is it important to justify psychological torture? Because it's a, another form of torture. Yeah, I mean, we're we're showing you that how effective has psychological torture been? Actually, I, you haven't given us a case where it's worked. You gave us a waterboarding case twice. No, yeah, that's a psychological aspect. No, you, you're no, a, you're psych a no that's physical torture. They can I, can I, I gave you an example. Okay, can, can you I tell me how that's... Okay, yeah. yeah. Okay, so in your rebuttal to, your, to my third contention, which states that torture has worked, you stated that uh, the random FBI card were regular interrogation and then, I, then Now, it, once again, the, this regular interrogation only worked because of that fear of waterboarding. No. They're, that's they're, what our you, evidence you, says. Your, your evidence, can, can I see that? You, you can give it to me later, but I'll okay. give it to my partner. And second off, um, okay, so you said that it's fear of waterboarding, right? Yeah. Is there any proof? Like, is there any way to verify this? Like, they is there any way to verify your case? Yes. We I'm gave just you examples of billions of dollars spent because of the false information. Okay, yeah. And but that wasn't just the Iraq war. That was CIA agents just going around the world. Like, the CIA agents not go around C the world Not anyway. CIA, excuse me. Yeah, but that's where they're doing it effectively. But this is a waste of resources. Okay, isn't it? we should use our resources to is protect Is it moral to citizens? waste resources? To protect our citizens, if yes. We, okay, if we can do it more effectively, isn't that more like, aren't you but violating again, morality at that you, point? I because you're you, letting those citizens I die? I told you, and even in your own rebuttal, you stated that we could use torture at the end. No, we, I never said that. I have, okay. <laughs> all right. Um, you talked about how the recruitment process isn't um, important, right? Isn't it significant if torture is being used to increase terrorism, isn't that the ends we're trying to stop? Because the resolution says preventing so that, terrorism. If we're actually increasing it, doesn't that turn the, that does no, that turn your entire case? Because once again, you're also looking on a consequentialist based standard, oh, that we're looking at the effective means of it. So towards the, towards the latter of anything that we're talking about okay. here, you're gonna look towards and the fact for that the that la last time question has um, actually worked. Do you guys mind if I ask the last question? Yeah, okay.
Okay. Is everybody ready? Okay. All right. So this is, debate has got kind of muddled, and I'm going to go back to the framework of where, how you're going to judge this round. And we, we've been talking about like effectiveness and whether or not uh, that's important. But I would look, like to go back to the uh, framework we put at the top of our case, which is this cost-benefit analysis. We have to look at uh, the means and the ends. And we have to look at whether or not the means are it's, it's actually morally justifiable to torture people. We also have to look at the effectiveness of torture. Um, and I think we're winning on both fronts. We are winning on both fronts. Uh, first of all, because of morality. Uh, the means to the end. It's, it's not justifiable because it goes against basic human rights. Just because the Geneva Conventions uh, don't specifically mention terrorists, uh, there are other stuff like the Declaration of the Human Rights and the UN kind of stuff. And just because there isn't a present law in place doesn't mean that it doesn't inherently go against human rights. And what we're saying is that these torture, the, the, this kind of torture is against, the, uh, is against kind of basic human rights. Uh, the Declaration of the Human Rights, again, uh, covers terrorists. It basically covers everybody. It's not just, it doesn't matter their, uh, their, what, what they want. For instance, or whatever. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is effectiveness. And this is really paramount because if torture really isn't working, then there's no reason to use it. Our opponents have talked about the state should use everything that they could, but I mean, we, we, the state should still be using the most effective ways. And if it's not effective, we shouldn't be using it. And we've shown how it's not actually effective. Um, it actually, we, we gave the evidence about how, um, how you know, they, they, they gave a few examples among them, the Abu Zubaydah example, where we actually showed that it was the use of, it was after the torture, when torture didn't work, it was the use of other interrogation methods that actually worked. And other interrogation methods have been proven to work in the past. And it really, the effectiveness, uh, a big issue here is that there's so much at stake when you torture, because people who are in pain are going to say anything, and that false information is all we have to go on, and it's going to cause wars. So if you're going to save 100 people from torture, you might also be sending killing thousands of American troops uh, based on false information. For these reasons, because it's morally wrong and it's ineffective, I urge a con ballot. I'm just going to bounce around and give you voting issues. Why you, you have to vote pro. Okay, ready? Opponents ready? Yeah. Ready? The single easiest way out of the round is the, at the top of the con case where they say that we have to weigh the round based upon who is getting the best of the cost-benefit ratio. I'm getting the ben uh, better of the cost-benefit ratio for two reasons. First of all, you can extend the Walzer evidence, which states that we have to do whatever it takes to stop uh, potential uh, atrocities against their own citizens. This is going to operate as the s single most uh, strongest argument in the round because insofar as we could prevent terrorism from happening, then we must uh, go through any means to achieve it. So, uh, so. Basically, our opponents didn't even touch over this. So then, you could, this is the easiest way out of the round. You should have already signed your ballot. But second, you could go to the definition of torture. Remember, Alan Dershowitz states that uh, psychological torture is also a form of torture. This is going to mean that they they still haven't shown us why psychological torture is unjustified. They're just saying that all to uh, physical torture is unjustified. However, even if we're losing that physical torture is bad, which I'll show you why it's good. But even if we're losing that argument, they still have to show why psychological torture, which is also a form of torture, is bad. 
as well. They're not doing that. They're not doing enough work there. Then you could go to where they say uh, they say that we don't show any examples where torture has worked. But then you could go to the uh, contention three. First of all, the Contention 3 tells you that this worked in Israel, this worked in Philippines, and the Philippine example is a perfect example of a possible real-life scenario of the ticking bomb scenario. These people would have blown up, uh, would have blown up 11 airliners had it not been for torture. This just shows you that when we use torture, it does work. And even if it's ineffective, as they said, we should try to uh, pursue and exhaust every uh, course of action before we call it quits. This means that the government has to do whatever it takes to try to stop uh, potential terrorism, even if, if, even if, even if it means that we're going to have to do it through immoral means. But then the other, second, uh, the other easiest way out of the round is their response against, against contention too. They say that terrorists still should have uh, a basic human rights. However, as I stated, I preempted this argument by saying that because they alienate themselves from the international community, they don't deserve any kind of protection from that community because they break the fundamental laws that the uh, society is governed by. I mean, we could circle. So, I mean, we, we just circle around this, this mic. How about this? If you like, and we can hang in, and that way, you know, as long as you're trying to keep a raise your head, you can keep that closer. Uh, uh, oh, there's a second mic. Oh. Okay, we'll wait. Okay. You got it? Are you ready? <laughs> you talk about at the end of, uh, at the beginning of your case a society should take any means to um s like basically just to save the people's lives right what do, under the could, argument. yeah um could i ask you what do you mean morally just if basically we just we killed all old people and gave the or organs to uh, teenagers that needed them because they first have longer all, lifespans. First of all, I would say that that's an extremely abusive argument because that has never happened in real life. By doing right, that, well, you're taking away all the ground from the pro. Actually, this has happened. It's organ yeah, donation yeah. scams in China. So we killed all old people. No, and I mean, right, different, not, different not, populations. Right, here, it's not even done by the government. And how so. is that relevant okay. to torture? Right, because, right, here, no, here, here, here. This is relevant to your argument because you're saying a society should take any means no matter how immoral. Right. So, so basically, basically my partner's question. We can bring up any hypothetical. Can I, can I you answer the question? Uh, here, Michael I... Walzer ex uh, explicitly says that we could pursue these immoral actions when our deepest values right. are at risk. Here, 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 here. Only when the uh, potential risk of what's going to happen what, 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 outweighs. What, 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 wait, wait, People can die with can organ I, failure. Can I get this? All right, so you, um, but you, you really haven't mentioned the, the fact that in the resolution it says just. Yeah. All right, so that there has to be some moral grounds mm -hmm. that we're appealing to. Okay, so even if it's – even if – so, so first of all, there's the effectiveness, yeah. but if, it, if it's so immoral, is that really just? Is it just? Okay. Do you want to take this, or? Do you want to take it? Okay. okay. All right. Um, when we're talking about our citizens' lives, so you're talking about stopping the next 9-11, stopping the next bombing, you have to have that available resource to you as a last resort. If you can we're do it with interrogation, as, why, can't, why wouldn't as, that be just? The, okay. link to more, the link to morality and morally permissibility comes under the Waltzer and the social right. contract so argument. Have, we I, have to do I'm whatever it takes to stop terrorism. Can okay. I ask the next question? Yes. Okay. okay. So in your uh, contention three, right, Yes. It, that it helps recruit terrorists, Yes. How many terrorists have been recruited as a well, result? We obviously don't have this oh, data, no, but actually, you we, don't have we data. Have, we have we data, okay. but you make um, the claim. It, no, in the, um, okay, in the case so it talks can about. Can I ask how, another question with a follow-up question? Um, can we, Was can the we evidence answer on the that? question? Let's, let's, sure. let's answer it. Um, you can have the evidence. It's right here. It talks about how thousands came to his funeral, and it talks about how thousands it, came to his and, funeral. And, and it said, to, no, how did coming to a funeral? They also said that they found new soldiers that came. How many? My question is, how many new soldiers? You're just saying it wasn't counted. One new. Let me answer. Let me. 
Is it? Let me answer this. Here. Okay. All right. So basically, it doesn't really matter the number. We're just saying that. It doesn't, or it doesn't matter, matter the number. You, it you does matter the number. The, matter, cost the number, yeah. the number okay. does matter, but we're saying that this actually added onto the other. The number matters, but you don't have the no, number. Please let me finish. This shows okay. that please, you're not achieving your. Please end. let me finish. Okay. The number, the we, we don't really have the exact number, but it adds the other harmful effects of terrorism, uh, or, of torture, where you're. It's not effective, but it's also increasing terrorism. All right. I I have, can I can I ask but a question, for please? For the judges to believe you, shouldn't they have some kind of statistic to rely on instead of Absolutely just your... Absolutely not. No, okay. that's not necessary. No, but, yes, I have a question. Your your Philippines, you're the guy in the shop who had a bomb shop. Right. Was there ever verified that his claims were true? Because your evidence just said that he okay. said this. Can I answer or? Okay. So when you when you're talking about uh, torture in general for interrogation. That happens after the interrogation. No matter what information is given in regular interrogation or torture interrogation, that's still being searched out. So you're not really ba wasting any resources. All right, we'll take the remainder of our breath. Yo, guys. Last page part. Do you still have it? I gave it to your partner. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. okay. Um, so today I'll be going down the reasons as to why you should be voting for Khan. First off, on the argument of morality, they talk about how they've basically conceded in this round that torture isn't just. They don't care about whether or not, they don't care about whether it's moral or not, which at that point it means it's not just, because as we gave in our definition in our uh, case, to be just means you have to adhere to a moral standard. So at the point where they concede that, that's the very first and easiest reason to vote con. Second, on, um, they talked about how, um, something I'm just bringing back from the summary, they talked about how psychological torture, um, how we didn't prove it's not just, we did. We talked about how it actually brings up false information and that was in our case, so at that point, you're using a method that's not effective. So you're not using methods that are effective. You're wasting time and you're wasting resources, and that could save someone's life. You're basically losing someone's life because you're not doing a, um, what you're not gaining your information effectively. Um, they talked. Um, we talked about how the UN Declaration of Human Rights. They said that terrorists give up their rights. We gave you the example of the American soldier. An American soldier, just because he's in a war, doesn't give up his rights. They. So, um, terrorists in other countries see our soldiers as terrorists, but we don't, t we don't allow them to be tortured. We don't think it's just that they be tortured. Each side thinks they're doing the right thing. Um, on the argument of ends versus means, we've destroyed both the effectiveness of the means and the, whether or not they achieve the ends. And if they can't have either of these, these are separate reasons to vote con. First off, we, have, we outweigh on the means because we talked about how interrogation has been more effective. We talked about how um, regular interrogation has been more effective. We talked about in our uh, second and third contention, just extending from what we talked about in the summary, that at the point where the ends are actually that terrorism is increasing, where we're less of we're fighting terrorism less effectively because, um, qu quote unquote, we spent millions of dollars facing, um, chasing false alarms. One formal official said this came from our case by Joe and Finney Warwick from Washington Post. We're sacrificing lives because we're not actually, go we're going after false leads. We're not saving lives. We're not fighting the war effectively. And then we outweigh on ends also because we're increasing terrorism. The resolution says we need to um, combat terrorism. And for these reasons, we urge a con ballot. Thank you.
All right, now that's all. Everyone ready? Yeah. Awesome. Okay. So uh, basically, what this round has boiled down to is, as my opponent said, the morality of the situation and um, its effectiveness. So let's go to the morality first. Now, my opponents make this uh, big claim at the top of their final focus that we're talking about no values here. We're talking about that we do whatever it takes to get what our government wants done. And that's false. Because at the top of our case, and as my partner kept saying, the Michael Walzer card states, when our deepest values are radically at risk, the constraints lose their grip and a certain kind of utilitarian reimposes itself. Which means at this point that we have to take actions to keep our members safe. So we're talking about national security here. And our greatest risk is one, the deaths of our citizens, and two, the impacts that that has. Because all these negative impacts, if you look at the impacts from 9-11, from the Oklahoma City bombing, from any terrorist attack, these aspects are the greatest harms to our values and our morality. It's a de it's it brings the United States to a level, that, uh, to a area that we don't want to be at. The, uh, the levels that that affects outweigh the use of torture. Now my opponent keeps talking about how interrogation is, is more effective than torture. Sure it is, only because regular interrogation is used in everything, in your regular uh, uh, cop interaction. So for that reason why, you can't just look at that. Once again, regular interrogation, even if we get bad information from regular interrogations, we're still wasting funds seeing if that's true. So regardless of where the information comes from, we're still wasting time, and we're wasting resources anyway. So if we get information through torture, that the same path is still going to be followed, meaning torture should be used as, once again, that last resort. And even though my opponents claim they didn't state it, they did say that they would agree to the fact that um, they take any extent to defend the country, as well as torture as a last resort. So that's, more, that's the first voting issue. And the second voting issue is, because psychological torture has worked in that uh, Philippines example, even though they claim it hasn't and we can't prove it exactly, you're still seeing the fact that torture can be used as a psychological torture, and for that reason alone, you should vote affirmative. Thank you. Uh, so, on a 2-1 decision, we sided with the pro Cardozo. Um, for, for me, it seemed that both sides agreed that there were two issues, morality and effectiveness, uh, but both ended up looking at a standard of either cost-benefit analysis or utilitarianism when our deepest values are conflicting, so effectiveness really became the main argument. Um, and in the end, the arguments that uh, torture helps regular interrogation, that it's worked in the past, and that it can be a last resort kind of carry the day. And so I said it was pro. Yeah, guys, I just want to thank you for this uh, debate. Um, it's not an easy topic. Um, I thought both sides made some great points. Uh, for me, the kicker was the effectiveness argument. thought Brock Science did a great job of uh, justifying that. Um, I, didn't, I thought Cardoso didn't really have an answer for that. Um, and for that reason, I picked uh, Bronx Science. Um, I thought both both sides did a really great job. Again, I just want to echo that. It was a really good debate from both teams. Uh, the thing that uh, really settled it for me was sort of the last speech. I didn't think any new points were brought up, but I thought the, the last speech really clarified what the round was about. Uh, the, two, the two main points that I voted on was that we're sort of accepting this as an effectiveness debate. I think both sides sort of agreed on that, at least in the beginning. We were framing it as we're going to evaluate 
both the ends as well as the means that we take to get there. And I thought that the main argument was the last resort argument that was sort of brought up, sort of said that, well, um, if we're going to decide it, to what to use, what, what's effective and what's not, and we're only using torture as a last resort, just because other means might be more effective or we use them first, doesn't necessarily rule torture out of the picture. Yeah, we're not going to go ahead and do it as the first thing that we, that the, uh, the first choice of action, but that it's still reserved as the end. And then finally, I thought that the Cordozo took it to a more societal level, saying what would happen to our society if we were not allowed to do that. And for those two reasons, both that you can use it as a last resort, also to, and to protect what's most important about society, I had to, I had to vote for the pro.